that was probably the most unbelievable sports weekend I ever spent. When I made my plans for the Final Four, I didn't think that I would be there more than one game because I, th- I thought UCLA is going to roll right over NC State. I pulled my dark room out of the uh, room we were in and go on back to Fayetteville and it'd, it'd be all done and over with. It didn't work out that way, as you well know. So uh, right after that game, mayhem broke out in the whole place. The Coliseum, the road between the Coliseum and the Four Seasons Hotel. I couldn't even get my car out of the parking lot. I ran down the road, down that median, the High Point Road, I think it was. I was carrying my film, didn't have my car, I couldn't find the taxi cab, so I ran from the Coliseum down to the to the hotel, and then it took me a heck of a time to get up to my room. And I processed, got my stuff out, transmitted about eight or ten pictures back to the paper, and then packed everything up, put it in boxes, went downstairs, got a taxi, went back in the evening, because it was an afternoon game. I don't even remember who Marquette was playing, but I knew they had won, so I figured it was going to be State against Marquette on Monday night. So I went back to the Coliseum, and I said, I have got to set up here, because if, if NC State beats uh, Marquette for the championship, I will never get out of the Coliseum in time to, to get my stuff out and get back to the paper. So I went in there and found the Coliseum manager, and he helped me out. He was a big, big help. And we found a, a, a janitor's closet that was on the same level, almost directly across from the NC State dressing room. I couldn't believe I was so lucky. This room was only four feet wide by about ten feet deep. It had one sink in it for the guys to wash the mops, and it had no power outlet. So in my stuff, I had 200 feet of, of extension cord. And the manager came over and said, yeah, you can work out of there, but he said, it's not going to be very good. And I said, it'll be wonderful. Just let me at it. So he gave me a key to the, this little tiny room, and I started running my cords back to, to a, an outlet. And he said, nah, don't do that. He says, I'll get an electrician down here, and we'll put you an outlet in there. They put me a four-plug outlet in that little room. I said, oh, God, now I need a telephone. He said, no problem. The telephone guys were all over the Coliseum, so... They put me a phone jack in there, and I said, man, I'm in business. So by Sunday, I was all set up, ready to go, and, and uh, everything was working out. As you know, the way the game went, and NC State won, and God, it was just absolute chaos. That hallway where the dressing room was, so full of TV and, and, and reporters running all over the place, and players in and out, and there I am working right across from them in this little hole, and I had my transmitter set up on the floor, had the enlarger on the floor, had the three tricks sitting on the floor, too. I had borrowed a mat from the gymnastics department so I could have something to sit on, and I was working away. And here it is at 11 o'clock at night, and we had a 10.45 deadline for pictures, which was later than most of the other AM papers in the state. Greensboro was early, Charlotte was early, Raleigh was early. So we beat the daylight out of them in the bottom line when it came to the final stuff. When I processed my film and, and saw that picture of Monty Tao jumping up into David Thompson's arm, I said, that's my first picture. I called a paper. There was a, a young kid named Tommy who worked in the sports department. He was the only person. There was that picture going around on, on the UPI uh, cylinder. And uh, you know how those things beep? They go ding, 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 ding. And somebody looked in there and told Monty Tao that his picture was on this little machine. So Monty Tao grabs the print off the cylinder, my lead shot for the night, and runs back into his dressing room to show his buddies his picture. Luckily, I had another print glued to the wall. It was my first print. And I made some adjustments on dodging on the second print. And so I put that back on. I had to finally get two policemen to keep the people out of that little room I was working in because the place was going nuts. Finally, I got eight pictures out, believe it or not. Tommy in the sports department said, you do the editing. We're way past deadline, but they're going to hold the press for you. We got eight or nine pictures in the paper. We had two on the front, we had two on the B front, and we had four on sports. 
and they took up just about the whole page. We had a heck of a paper, given the circumstances. That was the way things went that night, and it was just unbelievable.